Photo editing tools have evolved so much over the past year. You can now produce professional looking photos without any manual editing. In today's video, I'm gonna show you a variety of AI image enhancement tools, all from the Adobe ecosystem. Let's jump on in. Below, you'll also find the time-coded chapters that showcase each step of this creative process. So if you need to review at any time, you'll find them down there. I'm also super happy to share that this video is sponsored by Adobe. As you know, I produce a variety of tutorials on this channel, which showcase Adobe software. So I'm so excited that they reached out and they're sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. So let's explore a variety of AI photo enhancement processes from the following Adobe apps, Lightroom, Photoshop, Firefly, and Adobe Express, all of which provide AI tools for creators. Let's start in Adobe Lightroom. Lightroom is a fantastic AI photo editor for landscape photography. For example, here I have this nice landscape image taken in Thailand of these small islands, but I wanna boost the skies and the water and the overall color. So here's the before and here's after the edits in Lightroom. So how did I enhance this? Let me show you. Let's start with the masking section. Let's click on the masking menu item and here I can select sky and it will automatically detect the sky for me. I didn't have to use the brush tool to manually select the sky. It was automatically done for me. How cool is that? So with the sky mask selected, I can go over here to presets to see how the warmer preset works. I can increase the amount here or reduce it. I can also try the cooler preset and increase that to see how that works but I can also go in and do manual adjustments, which is what I'll do. So I'll scroll down here to increase the texture and the clarity of the sky. This just gives it more dimension by going in and doing that. And I'm gonna go up here to adjust the hue just to give it a little bit of an aqua color in the sky. I think that looks good. And then a little bit more saturation just to boost that a bit more. And let's go ahead and create an S curve here to pull down and darken the shadows and boost the highlights slightly just to make it a bit more dramatic using this point curve. We can also drop the shadows here just to make it a little bit darker as well. So this is the before and the after, a bit more dramatic. But now we need to match the water to the sky. So we can go up and create a new mask, landscape, and look, it came up with the sky, mountains, and water automatically for us, which is a huge time saver. So I'm going to select the water and hit create. And now I'm gonna go through and make the same adjustments I did for the sky. So here is the before and the after the two masks were created. So this is looking awesome, but as a final touch, I wanna to go to presets. Let's select this. It's going to analyze our photo again and recommend different presets to use to make our image overall more dramatic. Again, we can hover over all of these and just kind of see which ones we like. A lot of them look really cool. Like I love the orange that was brought through this one. And this is also beautiful. All of these are great. I love the presets here. It's a great starting point, right? But I think the one I like most is this one, but I think it's a little bit too intense. So I'm just going to reduce the amount so it's more subtle amount of this preset. You can control click or right click, compare before and after. The first image is fine, but I wanted a more dramatic looking landscape. And with the power of AI photo editing tools inside of Lightroom, I was able to achieve that. The next tip is how to remove blemishes using Lightroom. So as you can see here, I have this portrait of this woman that's beautiful, but our client wants us to remove a few of these blemishes that you can see on the face. And the client wants us to also make the eyes pop a little bit more. The good news is, is I don't have to do this manually. What I can use now is the generative AI remove and their new masking tools to do it quickly and efficiently. Let me show you how it works. Over on the right hand menu here, I'm going to select this remove icon and this is gonna bring up a new panel. We wanna make sure to use generative AI and you can use this slider to increase or decrease the size of the blemish brush. So I'm going to zoom in a bit here by pressing command plus on my keyboard and then I'm gonna press H to use the hand tool to just get her face better in frame and then go back to the remove panel. Another quick tip, if you're using a trackpad like I have here, if I take my two fingers and push forward, the brush size gets bigger 
if I push downwards, it gets smaller. So that's a handy little tip. So let's start with the blemishes up here. Let's go ahead and just select this little dot here and let's go ahead and select remove. And this is going to remove the area using AI. And then over here, you can see that there's a few different variations here. This second one doesn't look as good. A third one, I think the first one looks great. So let's go ahead and select this area here and let's remove. That looks good. Let's do a couple more here. All right, so I've done a couple removals, but as you can see here with this one, it actually starts to distort the lip a little bit, but we can fix that because what we can do is we can click on this little brush icon here and we can adjust the selection. So I'm going to subtract a little bit around this blemish because our selection was a bit too big here. So let's do that and let's hit remove again to generate a new area using AI. And then we can go through the three generations. I think I like the second one the best. So I'm just gonna go through quickly and remove all the blemishes. So I've removed all the blemishes that I want to remove while also keeping a lot of her natural beauty here. So you can hover over any of these to make adjustments. So because I'm done and happy with all the blemishes that I've removed, it's now time to do a general skin smoothing and eye enhancement using the masking tools. And I think this feature is super cool. It essentially scans your photo for any people and it will automatically detect the person and create different masks for these different body parts per se. So for example, if I want to smooth the facial skin and the body skin together, I can select both of those. And now we have all of her skin selected. If I only want to select the face, I can uncheck body skin. And now we have just a mask on the facial skin. So let's go ahead and create this mask here. And this will create a mask without us having to select it manually, right? So here is the before. And now with our mask selected, I can go over here to presets and select smooth skin. And look at that, you can see it's much smoother. I'll put a before and after side by side on screen here so you can see that. You can also adjust how much of the preset. So we could go down, that's the before, and really pump it up. And if we go down here, you can essentially see this is just removing some texture from the effects section. So you can adjust how much texture is being removed manually if you wanna go in from that starting point. So you can see how much time this saved by automatically selecting the face and removing the eyes and the lips from the mask. And now we can create a new mask and we can select person. And this time let's select the eyes and the irises here. So let's go ahead and make a new mask with the eye whites and the eye irises here. And now we can go to one of the presets and this time let's select enhance eyes. And this just made them pop a little bit more. It added a little bit of exposure. So what's really cool about this enhance eyes preset is that you have the option to use the preset as is or go down and make further adjustments to the exposure or the clarity as well. So this gives you a lot of control. Let's go ahead and let's turn the mask off here and then on again to see the difference. It's very subtle but effective. So let's go ahead and close the masking panel. And lastly, of course, we can go over here and make manual adjustments to the light, color, and color grading and effects. But what's really cool is they have these presets up here. And this will analyze our photo and suggest presets to use. So here we can go through and hover over these presets to see how they look. These are suggestions made from the Lightroom community. And I think I like this one here. It's the most natural and you can control how much of the preset is affecting your portrait here. I think this looks good. Let's also add a little bit of vignetting because I noticed this preset set doesn't have it. So we can go over here and add a little bit of vignetting by pushing this to the left. Fantastic. I think that's looking really good. So now let's go ahead and put a side by side of the before and after. And you can see by using Lightroom's built-in AI photo editing tools, we were able to produce a much better portrait. Another really cool AI photo editing tool that I use all the time is called Generative Expand inside of Photoshop. So I have our new portrait with the blemishes removed from Lightroom. And let's say that our client wants us to expand this to make it a landscape image instead of a portrait. What we can do is select 
our layer here, go up to the crop tool, and from this preset dropdown, select the 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which is perfect for landscape. And then we can expand this transform box however much we want to expand. And it will work with any type of background, whether it's a clean background or a busy background with lots of trees and animals. It'll expand the image and add to the image in a cohesive way. I'm just making sure that our subject is in the center and then select generative expand. You don't need to type anything here and be sure to use Firefly image three and generate. And this is going to give us three variations to choose from. The first one is selected, here's the second, and here's the third. They're all pretty similar. If you wanna generate more to get more variations, just click on generate again, and it will produce three more variations. You can do this as many times as you want until you find the generation that you want. So here are three more. In this case, I think I like this one because it's a unique grading in the background. It's not a typical vignette. Generative Expand is such a useful AI photo editing tool that I use all the time when I need to repurpose my content for different platforms, whether it's vertical for Instagram or landscape for a YouTube thumbnail. Using the same technology as Generative Expand inside of Photoshop, you can also use Generative Fill to do a bunch of creative effects such as lighting. Before we use Generative Fill, let's first combine these two layers as one. So I'm gonna press Shift and select both layers then go up to layer, smart objects, convert to smart object. So that way it's one layer. But if I double click on this, it'll open up as a separate window with two layers that we can manipulate in the future. That data isn't lost. So with our smart object selected, I can go over here to the selection tool and press Command A or Control A if you're on a PC. And then from this contextual taskbar here, we can select Generative Fill. And this is where you can type in what changes you wanna make to the image. In this case, I'll type in cast light through window blinds on our portrait and background. And here inside of Photoshop, you can click here to choose a different AI model that will work best for your workflow. In this case, I'm going to try the new Gemini 3 with Nano Banana Pro and then select generate. And unlike Firefly, using Gemini, it'll only produce one variation at a time. Our first result looks really cool. It even added a shadow here. I love this. But if you want to try more, you can always hit generate again. It will keep the same prompt and it will give you another variation. So here's the second variation. I think I prefer the first one. It looks beautiful in my opinion. Another thing you can do is add bokeh flares or other cool lighting effects. So if you just want to turn off this layer and go back to the original, press command A or control A to select the full photo. And then we can go to generative fill again. And we can type in something like add bokeh flares around the portrait in a cinematic way. And this time I'll use Gemini 3 again and select generate. That's pretty creative and interesting. Let's try another prompt. Let's select the original again, select the image, and let's go ahead and turn off that layer that we just generated. Let's go to generative fill and let's type in add purple bokeh light flares around the portrait in a cinematic way. Place the flares around the edges and generate. And look at that, that looks beautiful. I love this image. And you can always turn off these layers and turn on our other variations that we have here using these AI photo editing tools, especially with generative fill. You can create so many creative photo looks just with text prompts. Another thing you can do inside of Photoshop is use generative upscale. If we zoom into this image here, you can see it actually looks a little low res. So how do we increase the resolution. Well, let's press command zero to go back to the full frame here or control zero if you're on a PC. And then with our layer selected, we can go up to image, generative upscale. And here you can use the Firefly upscaler, but you can also use partner models from Topaz. There's Topaz Gigapixel as well as Topaz Bloom. Gigapixel is great for just increasing the resolution and detail as well as face recovery. But Topaz Bloom is more of a creative upscaler. It will add in more detail and texture and its own artistic interpretation. So it can change the image. In this case, I just want to use Gigapixel to improve the resolution resolution of the face and the overall image. So let's select that and be sure to select face recovery two times upscale. 
And so what this did is it opened up a new window here with the edited version that has the Topaz Gigapixel two times scale. All right, so let me zoom in here. This is the original. Look at how low res this looks. And let me turn on the Topaz Gigapixel upscale. Look at that detail. I mean, it looks fantastic. I'll put a side by side here up on screen so you can see the difference, but this is great for print and just bringing in more detail when you need to do photo editing. Another really amazing AI photo editing tool is Firefly Boards. If you go to firefly.adobe.com and go to ideate, it'll take you to boards. And here I can upload the portrait we were working with before. And just like we did in Photoshop using generative fill, you can click edit to use any of these models to add creative effects effects to your image. For example, if we use Nano Banana Pro like before, we can describe what we want to happen. I can type in cast light through window blinds on our portrait and background and generate. So here's the generation and I can just click on it and then add it to my board and I can expand it. I can resize any of these to make them smaller or bigger. So you can kind of see the difference side by side. And as I said before, boards is great for ideation, right? So if you're looking for inspiration for a design that you're working on, a magazine cover or a thumbnail idea, you can click on this button called Vary. And what this will do is it'll allow you to generate more images like this and you can place this next to it. And this will load up different variations with different models that you can then use as inspiration. So we can select any of these here, move it over, we can scale it up, and now we have a male model version of the same type of style. And unlike Photoshop, you can go another step further inside of boards, you can select the image and you can go to convert and you can go to image to video. And here you can generate video using Firefly video or these other partner models to bring movement to your image generations. If you want a full video on how this works inside of boards, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Adobe Express is another tool that lets you enhance images for social media using AI. So here inside of Adobe Express, I can start from an Instagram portrait post. Let's go ahead and select that. And over here on the left, I'm given a bunch of different templates to work with as a starting point that has lots of text, as well as image placeholders. I like this one right here. So I'm going to select this image and replace it with the portrait that we were working on. Looking good. And then I'm gonna go over to effects and you can see I have all these Photoshop filters and tones that I can play around with to see how it affects my image. With the Photoshop filters, you have classics like natural warmth, radiance, breeze, evergreen, you have different moods like a soft glow, you have retro vibes as well that you can play around with. In this case, I actually wanna go and play around with some of these duotone looks. A lot of them look really cool. I do like the marigold, but I think I'm gonna go with the aqua here. I think that looks really nice. And now I can select all the text and go to text color and I can use the dropper tool to select a color from our portrait so it matches. That simple. And now I can download this or I can share it with people on my team or post it directly to Instagram by scanning this or scheduling it from the desktop. So let's do a quick recap. Adobe Lightroom is great for removing blemishes and color correction. And Photoshop is best for creatively editing images, such as upscaling, expanding, and adding creative lighting elements with generative fill. Adobe Firefly is great at generating new creative elements to images, fast ideation, and visualizing multiple photo ideas at once. And Adobe Express is great for creating quick designs with your photos and publishing them to social media. So as you can see, with the help of these really cool AI photo editing tools, a part of the Adobe ecosystem, you can really enhance your images, not just from the quality, but also the creative elements as well. You can find a link to try out all these different tools for yourself in my description box below. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, keep creating better video and photo with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Fade to black.